right, it's your neck from this rat gang. What's up, everyone? The three of us are back again, and uh, I'll, I'm actually going to go last. I usually go first because I have a ego and insecurity issues. But I'm going to go uh, down there. Is uh, the man, the myth from New Jersey? What's up, Rich? Hello, guys. Hello. Showing off my my vinyl from back in the day from the '80s, and yes, they look that good still. I'm very impressed that I kept these so well. You know, yeah, they look, most they people look their vinyl is beat up, and these are just I mean, there's no marks. I got the little just a little cut out up here, but <laughs> for invasion, but I mean, these things are just mark, just no marks, no nothing, right? Good job, thank you, thank you. Even got the, the dance single that's impressive, yeah, from good Dancing stuff. Undercover, of course, and then to uh, from your on your screen to my right, my actual left. Welcome back again, Erica. Thank you so much for joining us. What's yeah. Up? Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to see that I weaseled my way in once again. Thanks for having <laughs> me. I, Rat's always very near and dear to my heart, so I'm super excited to talk about. Well, this was your idea. It is, yeah. yes. So I'm, yeah. Sometimes I have good ideas. <laughs> but thank you for having me. To do the first, and it was your idea to do the first four. We're including the EP as part of the first four. Right. It's a good album. I'm excited to dive in, but go ahead, right. Jack. <laughs> well, you know, you're always welcome, Erica. There's no weasels and rats don't really mix. So you, you didn't weasel your way in. No, it totally mixed. And yeah, this was a, this was a great topic because I think all three of us love the band. Um, I'm, I'm Jack yeah. Mangan of uh, Metal Hall of Fame, MetalAsylum.net. Uh, I did a thing for the Metal Voice. I don't know, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get a, ahead of myself, but, you know, Metal Voice. And then, of course, Am I Evil, the graphic novel. The book is done, man. It'll be in your hand soon, uh, but uh, probably, you know, cool thing. I'll just talk for two minutes. We're definitely going to get to Rat because Rat is awesome. But I got to say, last week, I got my Rocka Vodka, Vodka baseball cap um, from the Metal Hall of Fame. I was at the gala last week. My voice is still a little raspy because I was yelling for like two hours straight. Uh, it was just incredible just meeting well, all these people. live on the scene recording through the Metal Voice. Right. I did do the live. Yeah. Check it out at the Metal Voice. I was there. Doing the walkthrough, doing live. Yeah, I was basically their man on the scene. I was, yeah. Danny Kessel is the man. I mean, I could never, uh, no one could replace him, but it's kind of trying to do what he does <laughs> for New York shows. I was trying to do it to the Metal Hall of Fame. But yeah, it's just an unbelievable night. Twisted Sister, uh, you know, Chris and Pelletieri uh, mm -hmm. getting, getting inducted. Raven. It was just uh, Raven getting inducted. They just blew the doors off the place with their live performance. Yeah. It was You'd cool. Like, you oh, your phone and you were going around the whole room. We saw the, you know, the stage and the tables and who was sitting with who and, it was very cool. Yeah, and I got yeah, and I got to meet all these people. I got to talk to Lou Graham. I got to I got right. to talk to Mark Lopes. Uh, you got to meet Lou Graham. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you well, believe he it? Actually, I, he actually goes up to the table, right? You went up to his table. Yeah. In yeah. fact, yep. He he even put the my earbud into his ear. So there you go. I know right. that's kind of gross, but you know. <laughs> Listen, it's Lou Graham, like the Lou Graham. It's Lou Graham. So it's yeah, the jukebox hero. Yeah. So um so. Thank you to Pat Gisualdo and everyone in the Metal Hall of Fame for making that thing a possibility. And and Jimmy K and Metal Voice for giving me that opportunity. I mean, yeah, I talked to so many metal heroes and gods that night. It's just it's too many. I would, we could do a whole show. There's a recap, mm -hmm. but uh, that's not our agenda. So <laughs> anyway, that's, that's my roll. story. Yeah. Let's talk the EP. Want to start? Yeah, might as well start at the beginning, right? The EP. All right, yeah. whose leg is that? Does it say in the jacket? Whose leg is that? Is that Tony's leg? <laughs> um, I thought it was, actually. Good question. I thought it was. Good, good trivia there. I don't remember. It could be, because she's in the video for Back for More. Right? Was she? Do we have any, do we have any spectators yes, tonight? It's, yes, it says actually on the back here of the EP. It's Tony Katane. Right. Awesome. Yep. I knew and that. Of course, she was on... I'm not going to get out ahead of our us, ourselves. She was also on the cover of Out of the Cellar, but right. uh, but we'll get there. Let's talk yep. the EP. Yeah, yeah. So, so Rich, what do you? I mean, did you get? I'll ask first. Did you get the EP before or after Out of the, Out of the Cellar? After, because Out of the Out of the Cellar came out eighty three, but no eighty four, right? Yeah, and I think the EP is eighty three. EP is eighty three. I'm sorry. 84 is out of the cellar. So that's when we saw the videos on MTV. Right? 
Yeah, because then they then they released out of the cellar, and then uh, the EP was more like their demo, right? I guess I you know, could yeah. say that, but it was an official release. You know, this came out. Uh, well, this one's got Time Coast and then Atlantic, so maybe it was Time Coast first, and then Atlantic put it out. Maybe if that's the way it went. Because, yeah, it has two dates here. It's got 83 and 84 for the pressing of, the, of which one I have. So, But I'm pretty sure – well, these songs, we know these songs are earlier than 83 because there was yeah. Mickey Rat. Remember, Stephen Pierce had Mickey Rat first. He just posted something today about Mickey Rat. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. Because he's going to be putting out – he's actually reissuing the Rat EP with these six songs and then a few other ones that didn't make it to the EP. And there That's are a couple of different cool. versions, even of the EP. I mean, there was a song that was Europe only, which of course I didn't know back then. But yeah, there's I think there are yeah. like seven yeah. songs total that were on which is the seventh one. Because this one, we all know, Sweet Cheater, You Think You're Tough, which was a video. You got it. Tell the world back for more of the original version, and then Walk in the Dog. So what's the seventh? Are you sending me back to Wikipedia? <laughs> I, know. I, don't, I honestly don't remember what the seventh song was. It's not one that I, like I said, it's not one that I remember from back in the day. Um, uh, you're in trouble is on the, uh, the European release only. That. Could be you're in trouble because that's from that era too. Yeah. It's a good song. Cool. Love that song. Yeah, I think the, the EP is really solid. I think and it's it's a, such a great start. Um, yeah, it's raw, but, and, raw and heavy. Yeah. What, what about you, Eric? What's your experience with the, the EP? I love the EP, of course, you know, so first I want to ask, you know, walking the dog, how many cover, how many, how many covers do you think are walking the dog, right? Arrow Smith, um, rat, a couple other, who else did it? Was it, did Jimi Hendrix do it? I don't know. I'm not aware of a Hendrix one. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just making stuff up. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but I love you think you're tough. And I think that video is, you know, is awesome. A lot of cameos yeah. in that, uh, in that video. Um, love when they're riding around in the car and Juan does his little, so just, you know, my, I'm a big Juan fan and I love when he does his little, you know, when you find your own way out, when you're on your yeah. own. <laughs> the question is, did that video come out before or after the success of Round and Round and Back for More Wanted Man? I don't remember. After, because when Stephen Piercy, when he's in his Rolls Royce and he turns on the TV, yeah, they play the, yeah the videos, yep. Yeah. Mm. Round and round, yeah. I think back for more. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of that. That EP really, and let's face it, if they had just stopped after that, then the EP would have never seen the light of day. You know, it, it got popularity because of how big Out of the Cellar was. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say though, if you, I mean, the EP on its own merits, I think it is really excellent. I do think Back for More is probably my favorite track off of the EP, but. Love it's it. not the only, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty solid. Um, but I mean, I guess I don't want to like rush us through this, but what do you guys think about the two different versions of back for more, which one do you, Wait, you real quick, like Jack. one better than the other? A little, more, yeah, go. a little more trivia. Hold on. So on Wikipedia, if this is correct in 1984, because I have both stamps here, it's got Atlantic and then time coast communications. So in 84 Atlantic remixed it and re-released the EP after the success of out of the cellar so that makes sense that it came out afterwards this one now there's probably another version right oh yeah Jack? well i know there's a europe there's a european version um there's of, another of there's an EP. earlier pressing then that doesn't have the atlantic on it so i have the second edition all right well you anyone out there watching you know if you have any insight on the history of the, the rat ep um but yeah i don't know i mean just as I was just going to say, I mean, that's just as a set of songs. It's really good. Sweet Cheaters is an excellent one. Yeah. yeah you guys have seen them live. I haven't really, I've, I've never seen them live. So I don't know. Have you guys heard? Have, oh, really? You never day? saw them ever? No, I never caught them in any of their incarnations. Have you guys ever heard? What do they, they pull from the EP live? You think you're tough, Sweet Cheaters. So I just, um, my world. first, my first concert was Rat and Poison, um, MSG. It was March 1987. Awesome. And it was great because my dad brought us, like he dropped, my, my dad dropped us off in the back. But my sister was a big Warren Martini fan. And that's actually how, you know, Rat was more not my teenage years. It was my adolescent years, like 12 and maybe like 13. 
And my sister was a huge rap fan. She joined the fan club. She would get Warren D. Martini, like um, autographed pictures. They were in our locker. And awesome. we'd go to the concert. And like, remember when like iron ons were like a big thing? She's got this shirt that says, I love Warren D. Martini. And my sister, you know, we, we're polar opposites, but like she like made us move our seats. We're on like the side of the stage and it's my first concert. And here I am like 13 years old and like Rat is like jamming out, you know, it was a dancing right. undercover tour. And it just, you know, and that's why I think they're always like near and dear to my heart, but kind of back to the point, you know, I saw Rat, that was like the first time I saw them on a concert tour. Um, you know, I'll go catch Stephen Piercy. Well, Rock and roll is really, it is, but isn't alive in Florida. Like, you know, in New Jersey, he played. I actually, Rich, remember when he went on tour with Wasp? That was like the big tour with like Wasp and Seven Witches. I mean, Seven Witches. That was a yes. play guns. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've seen them quite a few times. And I'll always, listen, I'm not really usually a front row person, but like with Rat or Stephen Piercy, like I'll get as close as I can and I will rock the hell out of that show from beginning to end. So wait, you saw them for Dancing Undercover. So did you see them also for Reach for the Sky and then Detonator? No, that's no, nope, I did not. Okay. And Jack, you never saw them. I think the last time I never saw them in the eighties. Last time I saw them was when they played the Starland. You weren't there, Erica, for that one. I don't remember what it year was. It was for when the uh, Infestation came out. So what year is that? Let me look. You know, when's the infestation? Our infestation was like 2000, early 2000s, right? Like 2005 or 2006. Let me see. Should get up the 2010. Page. Oh, 2010. Um, so that year or the following year, they did a tour and they were with Extreme. And I saw them at the Starland. I missed it. Was it a packed house? Yeah. And they did out of the cellar front to back. My sister was there. She just commented. My sister was there. I, I knew she wouldn't miss that. <laughs> that was awesome when they did out of the cellar front to back. That was very cool. And Extreme were amazing as always, too. Yeah. Awesome. Lisa was there. Cool. Yep. That's my big sister. She got me into rat. <laughs> she was a bigger rat fan. You think like, my sister was like, you know, we used to have like videos. She used to make me watch these like v VHS tapes and stuff yeah. like that. She's like, oh my yeah. God, just Warren B.T. Martini. <laughs> they had the the rat, I think it was called Rat the Videos, maybe. Oh, I look at um, yes. That's, and then that must have been a good show, Craig. Brittany Fox and Kicks. Awesome. Yeah. Who was headlining on that one, Craig? I mean, obviously, <laughs> just follow up with a comment, please. <laughs> probably, um, rat. probably rat, because I mean, kicks were big by then too in 89. They had um blow my fuse out, so but I don't think yeah, they were headlining. Right. I would expect Rad to be the headliner on that one, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Body Mind said, he, "Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead." You have one job. So for the you're in Phoenix. Wait, where in Arizona are you? In Phoenix, yeah. Yep. So you're gonna have to put like you know Stephen Piercy. He still has like the Rat Bastards. I think you know they they play, um, you know around. So you've got one job. You've got to go and check out the tour the, the list and check them out, and you got to report back. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's funny because uh, Stephen Piercy and Vince Neil are doing a co-headlining tour, and I think they're coming oh, really? here soon. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that'll be uh, that'll be cool. You know, I mean, what an amazing set list you're gonna have between those two guys. I know. I mean, yeah. I don't want to hear. I know you're you're all gonna like all the jokes about Vince Neil are gonna roll in, but you know what? That's gonna be a great set list between those two guys. And just and I saw actually recently. I'll leave it at that. Uh, he added, "You're invited, but your friend can't come" from his solo album. Good oh, song. Nice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Listen, I want to see what everybody else is doing when they're 65. Like, you know, people can't even like jog a mile or walk a mile. They want to, you know, <laughs> don't rip on Vince, you know, because yeah. everybody's got their own vice. Um, yeah. So EP now, are we on, did we go to out of the cellar yet or not yet? Yeah, let's move. We can move along. Yeah, actually, well, you know what, Lisa, whoever this Lisa person is. My um, sister. <laughs> she, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, sure. you know, that tour I would have loved to have seen because that's Bon Jovi for 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, and that's Invasion. Like, that must have been a killer. Yes. That's an awesome heavy album. I love that Bon Jovi album. We should do that. I'm not a big Bon Jovi fan, but the first three, the self titled um, Fahrenheit. Maybe the first two in 7,800. Yeah, those are my. The, and then Slippery. After yeah. that, like, yeah, Slippery when wet, and because that's uh. when, like, all the, the nerds started getting into you gotta that. Jack, you got to listen to the other songs that are on that album. Same thing with New Jersey. You got to listen to the non-hits. I do like Without Love. 7, yeah. You got to stop after 7,800. But I say, you know, a buddy of mine went to that show that Lisa's talking about. 
And uh, he's, he actually he said that the crowd was nuts for Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi was opening. He said, you know, you could tell that this band was on the cusp. They were on fire back then. Yeah. And, and Sambora yeah. was smoking. The riffs were heavy. The solos were great. They were on fire back then. Are you guys too cool to do like Excuse the first me. three Bon Jovi but, uh, albums? My internet. <laughs> not. I'll always defend those albums. In my, okay. merciful, in my, in my merciful fate chart, too. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all right, well, let's yeah, let's talk out of the cellar because out I mean that cellar. that album was. I I mean I'm we're of the generation I for, I discovered Rat through MTV that video for yeah. Round and Round Milton Berle of course I mean it was a classic video it was you know yep. it was it was fun and it, it was a, what a, an incredible song I, mean, I know it's overplayed but man this is a great great song I mean it was and a great intro video. to a great band very fun video yeah for sure um, so I mean that's like I said, well, you guys, thought, well, Eric, why don't you go first and tell us your, uh, is this how you got into Rat? Is this your first intro to them? It, it is, um, you know, round and round, obviously the video. And I, I always remember things by grade. Like, like I was in, I was in fifth grade when this album came out and, you know, obviously round and round, but just, this is back in the day when I would listen to like, you know, just wear out tapes and wear out tapes. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think this is a phenomenal album. I love, um, well, all right, so the, the the hits are "Wanted Man," "Back from Where I Like Them," but I love "Lack of Communication," I yep. love "Scene of the Crime," um, and my yeah. two I love "The Morning After." That is like that as actually when I listen yeah. to the hair bands on Pandora, that always you know that always comes on, and I love "I'm Insane." And you're wow. in trouble. That's my favorite on the album. Is it? You're in trouble. Yeah. This this I love this album. I could listen to it over and over. It brings out twelve year old yeah. me. <laughs> I, I used to watch MTV just, all the just... time for those three videos. You know, Wanted Man, Back for More, Ran Around were played throughout 84 all the time. Yeah. I, you just giggled about him saying uh, Cold Hearted Bitch in that song. That, that's exactly. Song you're, you're in fifth grade. You're... Out on me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's scene of the crime. Right. That's a good beginning. A, that's yeah. a really killer beginning, though. Yeah. Like the drums and everything. That is, yeah. Yeah. That's it's not a bad album. song. This album, it, it, it's really a truly a, 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 a it's a killer, killer album. Um, yeah. I, I was gonna say probably. By the way, I'd probably say back for more might even be my favorite on this album. I think I do. I know some people prefer the EP version. That's what I was, I was getting mm -hmm. to before. I think I prefer the Out of the Cellar. I think it's a little more of a polished version of Back for More. It's, it's, it's a little just, more punch. It's got a little more punch. It's a little. It's a little uh, more concise too. I think it's not quite as long. It, it kind of gets to the point faster. Mm -hmm. I, I think. But yeah, you're right. I mean, the the deep cuts in this album are excellent. You're, I'm so glad that this album broke because you're right. Those all of those videos were all over. Yeah, yeah. Wanted Man's a great song, and yeah. you're and lack of communication. I remember WSU played that a lot, and it's, it was it's a, such a an infectious song. I mean, it must be Killer Life because it's just such a, a great beat, great chugging beat. This was '84, so between '83 and '84, I remember these three songs right from Out of the Cellar. Twisted Sister, We're Not Gonna Take It, I Want to Rock, Quiet Riot, Metal Health, Come On, Feel the Noise. Um, what's the other album I was thinking of? Something else that was huge at that time. Well, Motley, Motley Crue. Shout out to the Devil. Yes, Shout Out to the Devil. Uh, look at like too, too Young to Fall in Love. I mean, those oh, bands, yeah, all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, the one, Slade's one 80s hit. Was yeah, just, I just was, I just put in there. That was a flapper, I a flapper, pyromania, uh, oh, I had shirts too. And, and fooling, you know. Yeah, it was a huge year for metal. It was, and yeah. that's like a, that was like you know when like MTV was only out for like a year or two. Like remember like running home after school, like turning on like you know that it was like a heavy metal power hour. It went on from like three thirty to four. And yeah. I remember like running home. Um, so I just want to answer. So Craig asked if Poison got a bigger pop when they opened up for Rat. Um, you know, it's funny because is my sister still on? I mean, they they did, but the, I mean, it's just not as big as as Rat. People were there for Rat. You know, Poison. Um, they definitely they actually played the Limelight after. I remember some guy gave us like things like, right? "What's the oh, Limelight?" Wow. Like I'm like 12 years old. Like I can't go there. But that was for um, the debut. That was for Look What the Cat Dragged in '86. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think the Rat Moore had yeah, they had a big pop, but Rat definitely, you know, so not, I don't want to say weird, but it was just amazing to see like Rat like you know pack you know a, an arena. Mm -hmm. Hang on, you guys, we have a serious question though. Hang on. Oh, that's Andre. You guys know Andre. I like turtles. <laughs> What's up, Andre? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we've had him on this show before. Yeah, he's a good guy. Oh, I'm stealing his thunder. Sorry, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> 
I saw wow. Andre at a, a concert recently. I forgot which one I was at a few months ago in Jersey. Um, Andre, what concert was that? Oh, Wasp and Ormond Saint. I think I saw Andre at a concert once too. Excuse <laughs> no me. No passion, Andre. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so I, I still love this album and I always will. It's you know yeah. I'm with you, Andre. I'm with you on that. <gasps> Wasp. <laughs> um so yeah, so out of the I mean, I don't know. I mean, we can gush about out of the cellar some more, or or you know, we can move on to invasion. Um Okay. I don't know. I don't I can't find fault with out of the cellar. I mean, if you I mean No, I can't either. So now we're going to move. Her name is like um, <laughs> inside the lucidity. Um, so when we were all like, as we were like, you know, reaching, you know, uh, kind of transforming from teenager to woman, we all wanted to be, what's her name, Marion on that album. And I agree, Andre, this, uh, this, this is, Invasion is probably my favorite album. From is it? Yeah. Oh. I like it a lot too. It's tough. It's a tough fight between this and Out of the Cellar, I got to say. It I is. prefer Out of the Cellar just you know, just because I feel like Out of the Cellar doesn't have any filler at all. I feel like Invasion does have a couple of songs that I'm, you know, I just kind of gloss over. But it also has Rat at their best. I mean, it, I don't think Rat has ever been better than on the great songs on this record, which uh, you know, of course, of course, Lay It Down. Uh, to me, that's just the peak. That that's riff, peak. Warren, right? Warren's riff that is so heavy and one of the most memorable. Right, riffs of all time in metal. When you hear that riff, you know exactly what's on it. Yeah. For sure, one of the it's one of the best drop D riffs ever of any of metal of any any genre. I mean, it's it's a you know it's a drop D guitar riff, and it's just such a badass riff. You're right, it's just so heavy. And the song, you know, Stephen, we haven't talked a lot about Stephen. What's what he brings to the band? Because I mean, actually, let's take a second. It's probably a good time to talk about it. Because Robin and Warren songwriting, one of the great one of the well, songwriting, and just also one of the great unsung. Uh, twin guitar attacks. The two of them oh, were so amazing. so amazing together. Yeah, um, so heavy. So they harmonize together too. You know, they split off and they do their parts of the solos, but then when they come together and they harmonize, it's awesome. You know, yeah. one of my favorite the round and round video when Warren's doing his guitar. You know, he jumps through and then he looks up and like points. Yeah. Like that's like my. I always remember that part of the video. He's that's like, a great moment. Yeah. Oh yeah. But real no, quick, guys. Exactly what you mean. If you have this, if you have. Rat the Atlantic Years CDs, right? Which has a couple bonus tracks here and there. It's very cool because you get all these liner notes, not liner notes, all the album information for each album. So it tells you who wrote what for each song. So for Invasion, yes, Andre, he definitely was. Yeah, for sure. Um, Your Love is Piercy Crucier. Is that how you say it? Crucier? Crucier? Let's call him Juan. He's the only one. Yeah, Juan. Cool. All right. So then <laughs> never use love. Love that song. That's one of my favorites. Yes. It's a good, it's a good one. Don't that's steal a my thunder, Catino. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a piercy <laughs> one. Lay it down. So guys, who do you think wrote that one? It's actually collaborative. Um, I thought Robin. Robin Piercy. And... Piercy got it. He writes all the lyrics, right? I think Piercy's on everything. Mostly, I think. Yeah. So it's Piercy, De Martini, Crosby, and Crochier. Juan. Did Blosser write any songs? Uh, this album, no, I don't see his name listed for anything on this one. Remind me to tell you about my little sniff I had with Blots. I know he gets a co-write on other albums, but not on this one. I don't see his name. All right, I want to hear that story now, actually. <laughs> so um, Bobby Blosser was on Facebook for a while, and you know, one day he was like, he was selling all Robin's guitars on like eBay, and he was like bragging about something and you know i usually keep my opinions to myself like I, i'm really nobody to you know and or he posted something about something and i'm like you sold out when you sold robin's guitars and he's like what i do with my guitars are none of your business you my dear are just a bleep on life's radar and i was like uh and then i don't know he's, he's like you know i make and it was like 100k a show and I, to me i thought it was like a thousand dollars so i was like after paying a sound guy you know uh this this and that you know, um, I, you know, I, at least I don't work for peanuts and then he, you know, something like that. And then I just stopped, like we just started, we went at each other, but he got annoyed that I 
told me he sold out when he sold Robin's guitars. Cause I'm like, I'm like, rat's no longer a cash cow. People just go wherever, whenever to go see rat. Like I'll listen, if Warren came with a version of rat, I'd go see that rat. If you know, Steve, I mean, I'll always go see Stephen Piercy, but yeah, we had a, we had a little tiff, but he told me I wasn't a bleep on life's radar screen and that's okay because you know what? He's a hundred percent, right? <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> no. Yeah. I have a screenshot somewhere. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, all right. So I left it off. I lay it down. So you guys want me to keep going, or you want to talk about the the the, uh, the album? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, we don't need to go to song by song, but I mean, just you know, just yeah. what are your what are your Rich? What are your general thoughts on the album? Like, do you have some kind of hidden gems and hidden favorites? Yeah, as I'm looking at the track listing, I always liked "Got Me on the Line," the one with the phone call that comes hello? in first. Yeah, he's like hello, right? hello, <laughs> hello? Yeah. yeah. I always liked that one. <laughs> And uh, I think Give It All is pretty cool, too. Yes. Yeah, I like that one. Those two. Yeah. I, I love this whole album. This, you know, um, Between the Eyes. Mm -hmm. When we like were kids, we used to sing Dangerous But Worth the Risk. It sounds like he says, you like my prick, but you're loving this. <laughs> so we used to sing that. But um, I love um, Closer to My Heart. That's a good one. That's kind of ballad, like ballad-ish, ballad-ish, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just this whole album, I could listen to it probably because my sister made me listen to it over and over. It mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, it, yeah, I could listen to it over and over. So I probably went through four of these cassettes. Yeah. All right, Jack. What I mean, about you for this album? Uh, you know, one thing they're really good at is with the uh, the earworms. You know, like they get stuff like that just gets under your skin and you can't and dangerous but worth the risk. I'm I'm singing it in my head right now. God damn mm -hmm. you! You know, it's it's one of those ones that Rat does really well. I have um, seen you know, them do that. You want to have a sing along? I know something. <laughs> I know something. That's yeah, cool, especially though. with my That's my cool. voice all shot. Yeah, let's do that. We'll have yeah, Andre. Andre, Andre couldn't join and sing for us. <laughs> but every year, oh. right though, every guitar. Like if you think about this, the riffs in the beginning, other than closer to my heart, but for the most part, like like think about what you give us, what you get. Like this, the, the openings and yeah. hello. Yeah, Warren really did a. Yeah. Yeah. He did a good job with his riffs on these. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I know he wasn't really, he was pretty celebrated, but Warren Martini was just such a great player, was such a great kind of cutting sound, just a great, powerful sound. And again, Crosby too. I mean, it's I shouldn't separate either one of them. They're both just Both fantastic. of them are uh, very melodic, but purposeful. You know, the solo is purposeful to the rest of the song. You always get the melody of the song back in the solo, you know? Yeah, I, yeah, that's that's a that's a good point. I mean, I don't know, I right, I can I can sing note for note all the all the the great solos, you know, between those guys. So that's yeah. that's just one. And Warren's um, a super nice guy too. Like, have you ever met? And I can't, Jack. You know, come back. You got to meet him. No, but Rich, have you ever met Warren? No, I haven't. I don't think I've actually met any of the guys in Rat. Rat. No, I met Juan once, but I never met the rest of the guys. I'd like to. So back in like 2017, um, Matt and I went to see them in Philly and, um, you know, rocked the show. And then Matt and his friend, Sean Patrick, um, they're like, hey, you know, the guys are upstairs, you know, let's go. So we were the only ones there. So the, the three of us go up there and I don't know if you ever saw the video, but I, I Matt brought the sandwich maker. I um, made Stephen Piercy um, a peanut butter oh, cool. and jelly sandwich. It's on video. Matt's like, Erica's making sandwiches for the stars. And, you know, <laughs> we were just like hanging out. And I just sat down next to Warren. I was like, what do you say to these guys? Like, you know, like you were such an inspiration. Like they probably mm -hmm. hear it all. Right. So yeah. I was like, so Warren, I'm like, what was like the last concert that you went to? And he said it was Mumford and Sons. But he's just he's so nice. And he's just like he's just a gentle guy, like his legs crossed. And he's like, yeah. You know, I went to Mumford and Sons, you know, and um and, and Juan's pretty cool too. And then, you know, obviously um Carlos was um was there too. But I for sure yeah. um they're all like really cool guys. And it was funny because when I was making the sandwich, Juan came in and like, you know, he's like, Do you know this girl? And that Matt's like, nah, she just broke in here. <laughs> he's like, Do you work in the radio station too? I'm like, nah, I'm boring. I work in human resources. So he's like, oh, okay, but they're all super nice. Eric, I hope you see Andre's uh, comment for you. Andre's, oh, Andre's providing our, our comedy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Andre, pimp, pimp where you're, put a comment, pimp where you're playing tonight. People should go out and see you. Um, it's my belief. It's a little far from me from Phoenix. But, uh, He's such an awesome but, singer. Have you ever heard him, Jack? Yeah. You know, I, I'm not in person, but 
but I saw the uh, I watched the remember we talked to him about that show that that lockdown show that, that he did with um with Jack Frost yes, and, yes, and, uh, and everybody was, yeah, that's right that's yeah. right yeah he sings so many great bands so well great singer yeah I know Andre's in like 45 different bands yeah they they've actually come down here to South oh. Florida uh stairway to Halen they'll do um like a Van Halen and um oh cool and Zeppelin um you know cover <laughs> band so they've come down here like twice which is pretty cool Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so let's talk about Robin, though. For uh, for you know, I know we've kind of been talking about Warren and everything else. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I remember being out that night when Robin Crosby passed away. Like you know, and it's just to me that you know it's a shame. And I don't know if anybody read. Um, I read like a whole. Somebody sent me like a journal of just some guy who made friends with Robin, like in his last days. You know, and it just it's mm -hmm. you know it's super sad. But um, I was you know. I was a King fan, Robin the King Crosby. That's right. That was the nickname. Yep. And the Gentle yeah. Giant too, right? Well, as I'm looking yeah. at these, these credits on these these uh, albums, his name Crosby is on almost every song. Every other song, it's Crosby. He's got co-writes on so much. You know. Yeah, I mean, he's generally he is generally considered to be the heart and soul of especially of the early classic rap. Yeah, yeah, like when I'm looking at Out of the Cellar, his name is on every song. And I'm sure the EP too. Like when you look in the videos from the EP and out of the cellar, Crosby's always doing some kind of lead. Even if it's at the main solo, he does part of the solo or he's doing part of the leads, you know? Now I got to go back and yeah. watch some videos later. Yeah. I don't know if it's fair to call him a Steve Harris because that's it's not really the same, but maybe from a songwriting perspective, maybe the parallel, maybe that's a decent parallel. Mm -hmm. um, you got to bring Maiden into it all the time. But all right, well, Invasion of Your Privacy, I think it's, it's a hit, <laughs> you know, it's, like I said, I've got, I'm, again, I'm not going to throw shade at it. I just, I prefer out of the cellar. Um, but uh, so then what, so what, do you, all right, we'll start Erica with you again. Tell, tell us about Dancing Undercover. Well, you know, this is near and dear to my heart. Like I said, this was the first time I saw Rat mm -hmm. on this tour. And again, my sister probably made me listen to this album 425,000 times. But um, all right, so here's a good one. Before we get started, um, Oh my gosh, Body Talk. Does anybody here know what movie Body Talk was in? I know Andre's no, gonna know. Andre, give somebody else, back. give somebody else a, a chance. All right, somebody out there watching. I, and I I'll, I'll, I'll throw out a hint. Is, is all right. This is it from the year that this came out. This is eighty six. Yes. So it's from that year. 86, 87. Probably eighty seven. I'm gonna say eighty seven. Okay. Oh, Craig got it. I, 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 oh, I wow. to, remember when they go to the, the um, they go to the biker's house and they fight the bikers. Oh my God. I forgot. Yeah. Now I have to watch this again. I totally forgot. Yeah. Yes. And that was Eddie the Murphy. only reason we went to see the movie was because rat was in it, but it was a good movie. I, 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 I want the night. <laughs> yeah. um, yes. I love just this. like that. I, yeah. This is, um, I love this album, you know, definitely, you know, I like slip of the lip. I like body talk, but my favorites um, off this is, um, Enough is enough. That's a good little ding, ding, ding. That's a good little song. Mm. Starts off a little acoustics. Um, I like one good lover. And of course, if 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 if, and I should have done this the first time. If I ever get married again and I have a big wedding, which I probably won't, I want to open up the dance floor to dance with Rat. I love that. That's one of my could be could be top five Rat song for me. That was just excuse me. Just the video too is fun with them just jamming in the club and everybody just rocking out. You know. Yeah. Very catchy, I remember very, very I catchy. Remember and the other one too, "Looking for Love." That's my other favorite. Yes, that's a Dance good one. And looking for yeah. love, awesome. It does. It doesn't matter. Like you know what? If I listen to this right now, I'd be like, "Oh wait, I like this song." Drive. You know, I like this whole album. I'm just gonna say I like this whole album. Seventh right. Avenue, maybe. But when I go to New York and I see Seventh Avenue, I'll always think of this. But I just mm. want to ask maybe Craig or Andre, which rap video has "Sweet Cheater" in the beginning? That was something we were trying to figure out in the beginning, right? Yeah, before could we come be, live. Could it be back for more when they're driving? You said, is that the one when they're driving in the car? Yeah, because Wanda Man's out west location. You know, like yeah, a right, double right. Kind of thing. So it's Wait, probably back, back for more is Tony in the, um, they're in like the little diner. And in she the gets diner, up and yes. puts, Yeah, she puts him in the jukebox. Yeah. Yes. So it could but, be that. Yeah, okay. yeah, these, yeah. And I, I love this album. Not that I don't like, I like, we might have time for Reach of the, Reach of the Sky, but all right. Yes, you're right, Andre. But just yeah, right so Rich, there. Rich, give us your give us your thoughts on uh, on Dancing Undercover. I also like it a lot. I don't like it as much as 
invasion or out of the cellar. Agreed. Because it doesn't matter, and Seventh Avenue and Take a Chance are not particularly favorites of mine. They're okay. I like it enough's enough. And dance, one good lover, drives me crazy or great. Never was the biggest fan of slip of the lip. It's okay. And body talk was really? nice. And, body talk was nice and heavy and you know, aggressive song. So I do like this album, but there's like two or three that, yeah, I'll kind of pass on. I'm surprised you don't like Slip of the Lip. I thought that was a song tailor made yeah. for Rich Catino. Even though it was a video, <laughs> even with like Way Cool Jr., it was a video. It was cool. It was got a little swagger to it, but I wasn't the biggest fan of that one either. So like this was, one. if this was my set list, Rick, Rick and Rich, Rich, and I put it in yeah. the set list, that's when yeah. you would leave, right? Like Maiden. Which one? No. <laughs> Slip of the, the Lip. That's when you'd be like, like, like all right, I'm going to go. Like that would be the fear of the dark. Yes. Yeah. You'd be like, okay, I'm going <laughs> to go get a drive on traffic. Yeah. Possibly. I mean, it's not. Yeah, that overplayed for me, but yeah, I'm not the biggest fan. I reached Actually, out. Do, I you like... do you guys remember that video? I don't remember the video. No, not really. It's been a while. I'm so random, but I always remember like when they come out and he's like, um, you know, when they say it all the way, uh, it's all the same. And he comes out of the store and he slaps, I think Warren slaps Robin or something like that. Yeah. Okay. It's been a while since I saw that one. I did, you know, listening to it again. I haven't, I, it's been a while since I've gone back to the song. Listening to it again, I also actually "Slip the Lip" is my favorite musically. It's my favorite song on the album. Lyrically, it's like, wow, we're getting into creepy old man territory now. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, buddy, you know, stay away from those young girls. But, uh, but, um, but it's it's just got such a killer groove. Oh it's yeah, such a, uh, it does. Awesome. It's like like I was saying, way cool journey. It's got a little swagger and a groove to the to the riff and the song, right? Right, but it's not obnoxious like Way Cool Junior. Um, but I like, I do like Body Talk and the song. You know, Dance was a, just the opening riff. I, I see what you're talking yeah. about with that one, Eric. I, this a, those are my three, far and away the best songs on this on this record for me. Those three songs are just killer. Those are classic Rat songs. Um, so yeah, I like this album, but yeah, it, for me it is it's it's a pretty big step down from the the earlier ones. But you know what? It's still not a bad album. Mm. Um, all right, actually, Andre has a good question. I. I don't remember that. I do remember that. Yeah, I don't remember what songs they played, but it'd be great if I could get an official release again. Yeah. Had to be round and round. I mean, obviously. And back um, for more. One of these, let me see. It's uh Reach for the Sky when you get if you get this set. They have Way Cool Jr. from MTV Unplugged on this. All right. Well, you know, we've been going a while, so we should we should look towards the exit here. But I, I don't want to okay. shut you guys down. Like, if you uh, if you guys have anything, we'll reach for the sky and detonator another time. I I do have um some fun facts. Yeah, I don't that's know. Your, that's I, don't know my, I don't know if my two viewers, Craig and Andre, know, but I was actually in the Eat Me Up Alive video. I have their small snippets of me, and then I I don't know. This is this was um Stephen Piercy shirt from the video. He oh, gave so it to I my sister and my witness. Oops. He gave it to me all sweaty and gross, and I did wash it. Um, but that was a cool show because that was the first time, like, you know, we, we, you know, he brought us backstage. We got to meet every, you know, everybody, but, um, but, but blocks, we got to meet like Carlos and, um, yeah, Blaster left, which was fine. Cause we might've duked it out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a fun show. Cause that's, yeah, that's when they did. The, and I didn't even know the eat me up alive song, but I rocked it. It is a good song. Yeah, I mean, that album I'm not crazy about, but I think that's an excellent song. So it's a cool video too. Especially because mm -hmm. Eric is in here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's just a quick glimpse. You know, you get, I'm in my bright teal shirt. That's how you know it's me, you know? But I'm like, hey, yeah. Okay. Like, I just, listen, when I go, when I go to see Stephen Piercy or Rat, like, it just, it brings me back to, like, 12 or 13-year-old me. And, you know, all the troubles are behind me. And I could just rock it out and then go home, you know? Awesome. Big part of my life. Yeah. Thanks to my sister, though. She really is the one, you know, who got me into Rat. Now she's mellowed out. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I gotta well i mean i i'll just say one my story really quickly and i'll let you guys kind of take us out i'll say you know so i was at the 2020 metal hall of fame uh induction ceremony when stephen piercy was inducted and it was funny because uh you know he all these people are going long-winded speeches and they're thanking everyone they've ever met he just walked up said thanks and walked off stage that was it like he, he was he mean i said thank you but it was basically mm -hmm. that was it he took his trophy and walked back off and <laughs> That, which was to me was hilarious um you know and, and it didn't match what i was expecting i thought he would have a lot to say because my other my only other anecdote i was gonna say is i remember 
VH1 for a while had a show called the the list or the best of or something like that. And I remember him being on a couple of times and he had a lot of great insights. He was really, you know, he, he knew a lot about the music and was a pretty, he's a smart guy. So he always impressed me that way. So those are my two Stephen Piercy stories. It's not nearly as cool as Erica's by far, but you know, that's mine. Thank so. you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to ask Craig or Andre yeah. though, like who is Andre Wade Cool Jr.? Do we know who it, Rich Jack? Like, who is Way Cool Junior? No we'll have to do some uh, research on that one. Was he singing about himself? Arcade albums were okay. I don't know. I'll be completely honest. I, Rad did lose me for a while there. That was the two albums. I think it was two that Stephen Piercy did with um, the drummer from Cinderella. What's his name? Curry. Fred. Fred Curry. Yep. That was a side band they did for. I think two albums. Oh, okay. I see. I'll check them out. I'll give them a fair shot for sure. Was that solo? Um, was that was Robbie Crane? Like when did Robbie Crane join Rat? Like um, I have a lot of that questions. Was, that was later after Arcade. That was um probably around ninety nine when they came out with that. The uh, thanks, Craig. That's helpful, Craig. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what makes him so special, anyhow? <laughs> so, he's so good looking. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> oh. I hate that song. <laughs> no I know, I think no offense my, to you guys. No, no that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my least, um, my least favorite also. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you guys want to take us out on some parting wisdom or, or, or more about Rad? I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll say one more thing that I'm going to zip the lip. Uh, but, but Erica, again, dropping the knowledge. You, uh, you are an awesome, uh, Part of this team, so thank you. And Rich, also, Rich is the the, the metal scholar. I think that's got to be your new name, Rich. Yeah, Rich I don't know about that. Scholar. I have the I have the vinyl awesome. caps. How's that? So I, I got the vinyl caps. <laughs> I know you got the props. Yeah, thanks. But no, great job, you guys, and great talk. You know, yeah, right, yeah, very cool. Well, thanks for having me back again. You know, thanks I'll always uh, I'll always try to weasel. Hey, what about this one? What about that? But I always <laughs> like talking music. You know. Yeah. Totally. All yeah, right. awesome. All right, well, thanks everyone for watching. Yeah, we're gonna peace out. All right, thanks, thanks guys. Good night, everybody. Good night.